What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. So guys, I'm very excited for this review. Uh, this review actually has a bit of a backstory because it has to do with two things I've mentioned on this channel numerous times already. The first thing is my Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical 38 millimeter, a field watch that I have a ton of experience with. You guys should have a ton of experience with it by now because I mention it on my channel uh, a bunch, practically every episode. And then another thing that's literally in each and every episode but some of you may not realize it, this right here, this book, A Man and His Watch. It's literally been my backdrop uh, for over a year, probably almost two years. But okay, enough talking. I'm very, very excited for this review. So let's just get into it. It's 2.28 PM. Let's get down to business. <laughs> All right, so real quick, if you're not familiar with either of the items I mentioned earlier, uh, the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical or this book, I'm gonna link two episodes where I mentioned them heavily uh, in the description below, and I'm gonna put one link up here. YouTube only allows like one link at a time. So as many of you know, I have a bit of a field watch fetish, and uh, that kind of led me to loving Hamilton's, right? The Hamilton Khaki series, a lot of awesome field watches to choose from, and right here is my Hamilton Hamilton Khaki Field Watch 38 millimeter. So why do I love it so much? Well, first, the sizing, right? 38 millimeters, I think 40 millimeters and just below, uh, I think that's really the sweet spot. So anything just below or just above, I think it wears perfectly on a multitude of wrists. You know, I'm a big dude, I have seven and a half inch wrists and uh, we can get a close up. This Hamilton Khaki Field Watch, you know, it's small, but mighty. There's a joke in there that I just can't say. Demonetized. But yeah, 38 millimeters, only like 9.5 millimeters thick. Uh, th that's the way a field watch should be. Sleek and out of the way, won't get hung up on any equipment or gear, uh, just perfect. This Hamilton's got a tough hand wind movement. It's got a sapphire crystal. Uh, it's got that really classic old school military aesthetic, just very, very simple. Now, although I honestly gush over this watch and I love it and I mention it here on the channel all the time, there's one thing about it that makes me, I don't know, less excited to bring it out with me on my camping trips with Connie or on our little overlanding trips. Uh, there's something that just makes me not super confident about this watch and that's the water resistance rating or lack thereof, okay? This watch has got a 50 meter water resistance rating and no threaded crown. Now, before you guys jump down my throat and make the erroneous claim that hand wind only mechanical manual watches never have threaded crowns, here's some right off the top of my head. First of all, most of the Rolex Oyster Precisions, Oyster Case, threaded crown, mechanical. Hand wind only. The Vostok Commander Ski, or Commander Ski, however you want to pronounce it, it's a Vostok, it's hand wind, and it's got a threaded crown. The UTS Commander, again, manual, threaded crown. The Glycine Half Hunter, manual, threaded crown. Now guys, those are some that I know just off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's a ton more, so leave some comments in the comment section. I'm sure you know some. So although I've listed a few hand wind watches with threaded crowns, I think there's one more we need to talk about today. Because it's clear that I do love this Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical, but there's some room for improvement. And I know a bunch of you right now are probably wondering, okay, we get it, but what does this book have to do with it? What does a man and his watch have to do with any of this? Well, the author of that book actually designed a field watch along with Serica watches, and I have a few of them here in the office today. So guys, real quick, as just a little aside, this book, A Man and His Watch, Honestly, one of my favorite books on orology of all time because it's very, very kind of accessible. And I'm not talking about, you know, being able to find the book. You can find it, I think, at Barnes and Nobles. You can find it all over Amazon. It's very easily found, but I'm talking about understanding the contents of the book, okay? You don't need to be a reference number fiend. You don't need to know every single reference number Rolex ever made to appreciate this book. It's honestly a very casual kind of laid back take on watch collecting, watch history, just orology as a whole. And guys, you know I'm very passionate about watches and a lot of you may think I'm fairly knowledgeable, but I don't know everything and I don't know a bunch of reference numbers and even I like to look at things just from a kind of a simple casual perspective. I mean, many of you guys watching this channel right now already know this is kind of a very laid back take on watch reviewing and watches as a whole. I'm not super 
tech or spec heavy. Uh, I'm just trying to have fun. And this book is just very fun. Short, easy to read blurbs, really great history, incredible pictures. It runs the gamut of expense, right? There's some uh, more affordable watches and some all-time grails in the book. So I just can't speak highly enough about the book. And um, if there's one simple gift you can give a watch collector that is not a watch, it would be that book, A Man and His Watch. And guys, just as kind of icing on the cake, the author, Matt Haranik, is just a really cool guy, okay? And, and I really do look up to him as a content creator, as a man that makes content solely based about things he's very passionate of, right? Uh, from cars, to traveling, to food, to menswear, apparel, accessories, and of course, watches. And again, the best part is, he is just easy to talk to, okay? Uh, he's a busy guy, I'm sure. You just look at his Instagram, he's everywhere, he's all over the place. And all I had to do was write him a simple message and I was like, hey, you know, that Serica watch seems right up my alley. I love field watches. Is there any way I could uh, review it on my channel? Boom, immediately, yep, we'll send some out to you. No questions asked, he's just a nice guy and that's very cool to have someone you look up to and someone you respect and someone who clearly has a large following that's still willing to talk to people, normal people like me. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Serica WWW Wrist Watch Waterproof William Brown Edition. William Brown being Matt Haranik's kind of uh, all encompassing project, very aesthetic, very dapper, uh, very gentlemanly. All right, so when we take a closer look at this watch, the functions, pretty standard, very simple, hours, minutes, seconds, with hacking and hand wind. Uh, the case material, very standard, 360, L stainless steel. Now, when we look at the case, it's got a 37.7 millimeter sizing, and uh, that's a tad bit smaller than the Hamilton. Uh, this watch has got a 46.5 millimeter lug to lug, making it a very easy wear, even if you have larger wrists like myself. Uh, it's got a 20 millimeter lug width, so you can fit a multitude of straps on there. Uh, it's just under 11 millimeters thick, so still quite thin. Uh, you're getting a domed hardened mineral, mineral crystal, excuse Excuse me, I wish it was sapphire. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. It's got a screw in case back. It's got a threaded crown. And my favorite part about this watch is that it's got a lacquered black or white dial with patinated numerals. Now, you either love or hate those. I love vintage watches so that it's right up my alley. Uh, it's still got some incredible loom, even though, uh, you know, that faux patina uh, doesn't stop it from shining vibrantly. Uh, super Luminova all over the place shines like a lighthouse. So one of the really cool things about this watch is that you actually have two movements to choose from. So although I've kind of been harping on the fact that this watch uses a manual movement with a threaded crown, if you don't want that, you can choose from an automatic with a threaded crown. So very cool, you got some options there. So the two movements you have to choose from are an ETA-based 28012 or a Salita-based SW2101, and both of them, you can't go wrong in my opinion. I would probably choose the hand wind movement, just feels a little bit more classic, and it's probably a little bit more robust. Now the power reserve on this watch is about 42 hours, standard. And another one of my favorite specs, it's got a 100 meter water resistance rating, making this incredibly functional. So let's go ahead and do the dang thing. Let's go ahead and take off this Hamilton and throw this Serica WWW wrist watch waterproof on the wrist. All right, so here it is, the Serica WWW on my seven and a half inch wrist. Now guys, it's taken up a good bit of real estate. Again, you're getting just above a 46 millimeter lug to lug. Uh, and okay, one of my favorite things about this watch you're getting that domed crystal, okay? It, it floats just above that flat brushed bezel. Uh, looks very tough, very utilitarian. I know some people are gonna say, uh, I don't like the fact that it's a mineral crystal hanging up above the bezel. Um, but here's my thought process, okay? You're getting a very classic, almost vintage look with that mineral dome. Also, yeah, will you scratch this up if you wear it out and about? Maybe, probably, but a crystal you can easily replace. What's more important to me is that threaded crown, okay? Water damage in a watch is an absolute nightmare. If you scratch up a crystal, okay, you can polish it with some poly watch or, uh, again, just replace the crystal. If water gets inside the movement and messes up the dial and everything else, uh, 
that's much worse. And another thing that people often overlook is a threaded crown isn't just for water resistance, okay? Yes, does threading help mitigate any water from uh, getting into the watch's movements? Yes, of course, but also it protects the crown stem, okay? So if you have a watch that doesn't have a threaded crown and it takes a good knock, there's a way to break the crown stem inside the movement and then again, kind of a huge bummer, can muck some things up in there. But with a threaded crown, you knock that crown it has some rigidity because literally it's attached to the case at that point. So another really nice attribute for a field watch or any watch for that matter. And I think I may have mentioned this before. I love that there's no real font or signage. Uh, the only real lettering is the Swiss made down by the six o'clock and that's very, very tiny. Um, so it's just incredibly clean. You can really appreciate those indexes and that lacquered dial. Um, they do have a white one, of course, that you can see. Uh, I'm going to be wearing the black one and uh, the black one hand wind movement. That's the one that I'm going to choose. So as I stated in a very recent episode where I teased this watch a little bit, um, I said this could be a contender for the one watch collection watch. Again, it's not super obtrusive. There's not a bunch of wonky complications. There's not a bunch of crowns or secondary knobs. Um, it's just a very simple, again, sub 38 millimeter watch. Um, I should say sub 40 because that's kind of the common uh, benchmark, right? Sub 40 millimeter watch. Uh, incredibly functional. You wear it on a nice leather strap like this, it could be dressy. Um, you put it on a NATO strap, put it on a Perlon, put it on Cordura even. I think this could really do it all. And uh, again, you could find them for under a thousand dollars at the time of filming. Just crazy. So will I be picking up one of these watches for myself? Absolutely, not only because I wanna support Matt and Serica, and I, I really do like everything they do, but because this watch is just right up my alley. Again, it's something I don't have to baby, something I honestly could throw on the wrist, jump in the Jeep, and just go out in the woods and jump, jump in a lake. Hey, go jump in a lake. I could do that and not have to worry about it because it's got a freaking threaded crown. And so guys, hear me out. At the time of filming, in a few hours, I'm literally going to be jumping in the Jeep with Connie and we're gonna be going up to Lake Tahoe. And right now it's snowy and rainy and slushy. And so things are about to get, you know, a, a little bit messy. And uh, would I take my Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical? Probably not, again, because I don't want it to get any water damage. Would I take this? Yeah, probably. Although I'm not gonna take this one because they sent me this to review and I have to send it back. So I'm not gonna go mess up their prototypes. Um, but if I did own this watch and when I do own this watch, I will use it. So guys, as always, I wanna hear what you think. Um, a lot of you guys haven't ever heard of this company and uh, you guys were very excited when I posted a picture of it on my Instagram. So I urge you, um, you know, check out Serica watches, check out Matt and everything he does. Um, and just, yeah, it's just crazy. It's, it was really cool to interact with him, especially because I really love his book and uh, I've been following him, on, following him on Instagram for a while, excuse me. And uh, yeah, so to see kind of his brainchild, uh, to see something he had a direct hand in designing, very, very cool and uh, yeah. I'm a huge fan, but leave me that comment. What do you think? And again, special thanks to Serica, special thanks to Matt Hranick, and um, yeah, thanks for supporting my channel. But most importantly, thank you for watching because we just broke past 82,000 subscribers, guys. I never thought we would be here. Uh, we are going to go into the new year 2020 on a very good footing, all because of you. Thank you for supporting everything we do here on the channel. Uh, thank you for supporting the Time Teller shop. Again, we pretty much sold out during Black Friday. Um, so thank you guys, thank you so much. If you wanna go above and beyond, uh, you can check out the Amazon store, all the links in the description below, uh, some stocking stuffers that will take you to my affiliate store on Amazon on and it'll directly help us out. You can go to www.thetimetellershop.com and uh, check out everything I have there. Um, so a bunch of different ways to support us, but the easiest way is just to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, hit the bell icon and watch the content. So guys, like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it.
Real quick, if you enjoyed this episode, then do not worry. The fun doesn't need to stop here. Check out these recommended episodes that are going to be popping up on the screen anytime now. Also, take a moment, check out my brand new channel, the Time Away channel. It's where I talk about everything outside of the watch world, some of my other collections, some of my other hobbies. And if you're not interested in any of that, don't worry. Just stay right here, and I will see you right here. Because I, I never leave. I am trapped inside of this camera. That was actually a pretty solid episode. Can't be mad about that. <laughs>